Jolie Farms in Ecuador. Welcome back to the channel. So glad you joined us today for Conspiracy Day. Ooh. Yeah, we're going to talk about different conspiracies here in Vilcabamba. Some think that Vilcabamba is the conspiracy capital of Ecuador. Yeah, I don't want to give it that reputation. Um, but there's a lot of uh, definite uh, different ideas here. There are. There's a lot of different people, which keeps it interesting. And yeah. there's a lot of different ideas in every aspect of life. Absolutely. So and we won't tell you if we necessarily agree with any of these opinions. Um, you know, uh, we won't call ourselves conspiracy theorists. We're conspiracy realists. Yeah. When there's enough evidence to prove them, then yeah, it's now no longer a theory. It's an actual real conspiracy. So um, we won't tell you where we're at on that. That's something you'll have to get to know us better for us to discuss. But let's talk about conspiracies. You know, we have people from all over the world here in Vilcabamba and with a variety of ideas and belief systems, um, both spiritually, you know, I mean, they're all over the map. And uh, also politically, it's kind of all over the map. Um, so, yeah, you're going to have a lot of different beliefs. You do have a lot of different beliefs. I'm not going to say people congregate here because they believe in conspiracies. They come here because it's gorgeous. It's just beautiful weather. It's beautiful yeah. all the time. Yeah, but and it and you know because of the low cost of living and mm -hmm. and the attractive climate, et cetera. Yeah, it does attract certain types of people without a doubt. But um, you know, there's a whole lot on what we call normies here. Yeah, um, we look for normies more and more. Yeah, but these conspiracy guys, they're all over the world. Yeah, every corner of the world's got conspiracy theorists. Um, all right, so we'll talk about the first thing I think is Vilcabamba is best known for, and that's aliens. Yes, definitely. They visit Mondongo all the time. That's what they say, little green men. And mm -hmm. um, they say that, uh, you know, there's lights around Mondongo at night. And, you know, perfectly normal people I've talked to about this, very intelligent, um, you know, very, um, let me just say, well-schooled people. Uh, claim to have seen these lights, etc. I don't know that we've ever seen anything like that. No, but we did have somebody stay that saw the lights. Yeah, it turned out it was lightning bugs, you know, fireflies. <laughs> yeah, right outside the window. Right outside the window, <laughs> yeah. So, um, you know, so I haven't seen them. Doesn't mean they don't exist. And as soon as you show me a spacecraft, man, I'm in your corner. I was looking for them. You know, when we first moved here, I saw this weird light going across the sky. And I just kept watching it and watching it, going, maybe that's the aliens they're talking about. I don't know. No, there was a big floodlight thingy in Loha. And just the way the layers of the clouds went, it was Made reflecting it off. It was really interesting to big watch. Big celebration in Loha to have yeah, floodlights. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, so it looked weird coming over the mountains. It debunked that one particular theory. Yeah, at least for that one particular night. Yeah, <laughs> just that once. And, you know, we have a really good view of Mondongo and course I've got cameras and stuff we could set up and you know for years I'm not sure we'd ever catch anything but no you just got to believe but we have a lot of friends that have seen good friends yeah That's and, right. and they they've seen these lights I don't know it could be drones could be Chinese weather balloons I don't know <laughs> but every you know everybody's not sitting on the same side of the mountain so different angles different views That's right and so. you know I've never been probed so that you know of yeah that i know of and uh but you know some people here look like they've been probed a lot mm -hmm. so they maybe been... by aliens maybe not sometimes i wish i get beamed up <laughs> so yeah aliens is a big one and uh, a lot of talk about it and you know i'm i'm going to make fun of everybody today including myself obviously you're, you know, you're the supreme commander i'm the supreme commander yeah the high commander <laughs> and uh Big fan of Third Rock from the Sun. Love that movie series. Love it. Yeah, that television series. That was a lot of fun. They need to put full episodes on YouTube. That's right. So as the Third Rock from the Sun, we do have uh, some flat earthers here. And flat earthers, I guess we probably have some inner earth people too, huh? We have inner earth and we have flat earth. But the interesting thing is, I never heard about this when we were, before we came here. No. 
But once we found out about it, I looked it up and wow, is this a big movement? And it's not based here, but there's a lot of believers here. Uh, yeah, there's, I would say, I mean, there are a lot, there's maybe 20, 25 people that I know of, I think, that believe in flat earth of some sort. Oh. And uh, none of them have ever fallen off the edge. I know. They're still here. We keep looking for the edge. Yes, and some of them I wish would find the edge. <laughs> and if you go away and you don't come back, I guess I can assume you fell off the edge. Ah, maybe that's it. You were right. It. You were absolutely right. <laughs> maybe that's it. So I Who believe knows? You. I believe. You know, um, yeah, on the flat earth thing, it's so controversial. Those who are so passionate about it um, can become darn right annoying. As with all theories, yeah. not even conspiracy, all theories. Yeah, and you know, the, the round ball that we live on, you know, that's supposedly really sets them off if you say that. But so far, I just don't have a lot of evidence. But I'd be there. Show me some hard factual evidence. I'd probably be there. Now, don't send me anything, please. No. I've seen all of this out there on the Internet. I Trust went to, me. I went to look it up, and it's like I found this one site. It had like over 200 video presentations of why the Earth is flat. It's an interesting theory, but I don't know. If you can't go to space, which a lot of people believe you can't, then how do you prove it one way or the other? And does it really yeah. matter one way or the other? Yeah, 100 years from now won't make a bit of difference to me. That's the, what we were taught to But there think are in days school. I wish I live on the flip side. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I'd like to live on that underside. All or right, the inner the, side. Or the inner side, yeah. Maybe that's utopia. Who knows? Yeah, living inside. You know, the inner earth thing is there's an earth inside the earth. Mm. Um, I don't know. Maybe. I don't know. When we were little, we used to try to dig a hole to China. Yeah. Never, Never made, made it. it. But we didn't make it to the inner earth either. No. I don't know. Okay, so that's a big one here. A lot of conversation about that. Um, so number three is fluoride. Ooh. Now, when I was a kid, we had fluoride because we didn't have back seats in the car, so we had to ride on the floor. Fluoride. Here's your conspiracy. Your water's over there and the dog's drinking it. The dog's drinking my water. <laughs> I've been thinking the aliens were taking all my water. Turns out it's the puppy. Oh, it's, there's no fluoride in it. So. No fluoride. <laughs> yeah, so we used to ride on the floor of the car. That was our fluoride. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, you know, um, I think that our water treatment here in Bill Obama does not include fluoride. It may include other things, but not fluoride because they just can't afford it here. Mm, um, I don't know. If they can't afford it, somebody probably give it to them, but... Um, we're above the treatment plant, so thankfully yeah, so we, we don't have fluoride in our water. We don't have it, and we haven't really researched what what it is they actually put in the treatment plants. Yeah, we researched a little bit, but not a whole lot. Yeah. But, so I, I do think that um, you know fluoride is detrimental to our health. That mm -hmm. I believe that. I believe that. And uh, I know all about it was a byproduct of uh, aluminum. Mm. It was a byproduct, you know, that uh, the Nazi regime, you know. Uh, used in, in all kinds of nefarious things. And so, um, you know, I've read all that. I know a lot about it, but I do think that fluoride is probably not very good for you. Um, it was sold to the American Dental Association as the thing to fix your cavities. I know when we stopped using fluoride in our toothpaste, we quit having cavities. That's a fact. That's My fact. dentist did not like that. Shout out to you, buddy. You know who you were. <laughs> and... Uh, so, uh, but, you know, we haven't had a cavity since. And mm -hmm. so I think that kind of speaks to itself. Yeah, yeah. So you'll find a lot of anti-fluoride people here because there's a lot of people who believe in living as natural as you can. I think that's a lot of the, the people that come to Bilka. They're um, looking to escape the chemical world and, and live more naturally and um, get back to the basics. Yeah, yeah. So, I, I mean, I'm all for the natural, you know. Um, I don't shave my legs or anything. You don't? No, no. Oh, don't right. shave my underarms. I'm into the natural thing. Yeah. So, uh, I am into natural products because I have extreme allergies all my life. Mm -hmm. And, you know, things with a lot of foo-foo smell, perfume, etc., just drive my sinuses and allergies nuts. And so, I try not to put those things on my skin. I don't use underarm deodorants. Uh, if I do anything, I use mineral salts. 
and that holds me just really fine. Mm -hmm. Or maybe, I don't have that many friends. Mm -hmm. You never know. Never know. Nobody's ever complained. That's right. It's the complaints that really matter. And I don't sweat much here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in Texas, it was uh, two showers a day. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. So you ran the risk of having body odor a lot there with all the humidity. But here, you know, not so much. Um, you know, there are people who, who come into contact with us that are really oh natural. Oh, yeah. You, you can smell them a ways off. Wow. True. But back to conspiracies. Okay, conspiracy. What's next? Chemtrails. One of my favorites because we came out of Texas. Yeah, so, you know, here in Vilcabamba, um, there's, there's quite a few people who believe that there's chemtrails here in Ecuador. Um, I have never seen a chemtrail here in Ecuador. Except maybe up north. I think I saw uh, pictures in Quito where there's more flight patterns and so forth. And they think that there's chemtrails, and there could be. I mean, we don't live up there, so we don't know. Yeah, you know, in Texas, um, it looked like a checkerboard up there. I Literally. mean, it was really, and, and it was just the strangest thing. I've never seen flight patterns that could do that. They were not vapor trails by any means. No. Um, and they used to do cloud seeding in Texas. Um, when we left, at the point we left, they hadn't done it in a couple of years. Uh, cloud seeding where they put chemicals in the clouds and make it rain. Though um, they hadn't done cloud seeding, there were the checkerboard pattern in the sky. It was really constantly, bad. Constantly, constantly. Um, we don't see that here. You, there's just, if a plane passes, it passes that side of our place kind of like it's going to Peru. Yeah, um, and it's on the flight schedule to yeah. fly to Peru. So those are like commercial planes. But the, the ones in Texas, those weren't all commercial planes. Those were different. And we do have an app on our phone where we can see every flight that leaves Ecuador, or flies around Ecuador, you can see all of that. Now, I mean, you could get real deep and say, well, the government's not going to post those flights if they're doing, uh, you know, spraying and doing chemtrails. But I just tell you, I haven't seen them here at all. We just haven't seen them. No, no, the we don't have, I don't, I don't know that we've maybe once or twice had a flight. We had a flight come past us one time. That was a helicopter. He was doing some geographical survey stuff, and he was really having a hard time keeping his helicopter up. Yeah, he looked like an alien bouncing around. Helicopters here crash a lot because um, the updrafts in the mountains are mm. kind of tough, and so yeah, helicopters have a tough time here. Although during the pandemic, they did bring the Virgin Mary by helicopter mm -hmm. from uh, Loja over. Circled around Vilcabamba, the Virgin Mary was up there hanging on. Yeah. And they went around and around with the Virgin Mary so everybody could come outside. But a quick one. Mm -hmm. yeah. And she was gone again. She was yeah. gone again. So if you were a conspiracy theorist, you might have thought that was something alien. Yeah, but they're coming up on the, the trek again to where they bring her from Cuenca. The is, yeah, that happened this last Loja. weekend. Yeah. yeah. Very yeah. big celebration. Yeah, that's a big deal. Mm. Big deal. Not a conspiracy, but hey, it happened. Yeah. So, um, you know, HARP. That's HARP. Uh, that's the next one, HARP. So we studied HARP a lot while we were in the United States, and we watched Jesse Ventura and his television show, and we watched how he was attacked, you know, mercilessly. Oh, yeah. I mean, it was terrible how they went after Jesse Ventura. So I have to believe there's something to HARP and that they're messing with the climate with HARP a lot. There's some really weird weather patterns that uh, don't seem, uh, they seem more man-made than natural. Absolutely, and climate change is, oh boy, what a subject. Everybody wants to argue about that. And I will say that um, if you want to really be up on this, there's a guy called the Ice Age Farmer on YouTube. Oh yeah, he's good. Reach out and watch that kid, man. He's done some really good stuff. He's proven that. We have these ice ages in the history of our planet. And he's mm -hmm. taken all this data from NASA that's available for free mm -hmm. and put together these models. Pretty interesting. Every great empire on the face of the planet has come to an end during a period of extreme cooler weather. Yeah, and low solar flares. Low solar flares. And that's what they're caused by, low solar activity. Mm -hmm. And so the, the food supply dries up is what happens. Yeah, and I will say that 
as you know, our climate changes from morning to noon to night, which is works for me. But as we move through year after year, um, for a couple of years, we had a little bit cooler than normal summers, which was because it was wetter because we were in La Nina. Now we're moving into El Nino, which is closer to when we first moved here. And so now it's a little bit windier, a lot drier. Eh, back to that. So. Yeah, I've talked to some of the old Ecuadorian farmers here and they say, oh, this is just a pattern that comes and goes, you know, over the yeah. years. And they farmers just, would know. Yeah, because they're in it every day. That's right. So, you know, if you look back in U.S. history, the Great Dust Bowl, um, the, the dust from, from the central region of the United States, the Midwestern states, the, the farming country, if you will, um, that blew all the way out to ships 100 miles off the New York Harbor and stacked soil on the tops of their decks a foot thick. Um, and so many people claim that that was harp back then and that they actually reversed the jet stream and that's what caused it. I will tell you, it was bad farming practices that caused it. Yeah. Soil tillage that caused it. And because of those bad farming practices, we had a drought and high winds, which contributed to a lot of that. So yeah, it totally destroyed people in their homes, et cetera. Could there have been some interference to, from science? It's very possible. I can't, I can't say one way or the other, but so all of that's still open for me. Um, I don't believe in climate change from the standpoint that cow farts are doing it. No, I don't Sorry. think so. The Not cows happening. have been here for a long time. Yeah, my eating meat, is not causing this. No. And actually cows, if raised properly, can reverse a lot of the CO2 issues that are going on. This feedlot operations or what we call concentrated animal feed operations are mm. not yeah. good. Not for anybody. So um, rotational grazing can fix this problem. Uh, but nobody wants to hear that really. No, and, and we've been doing that for a while, but also don't leave your dirt bare. When it comes to these dry season times, make sure you have a cover crop because, you know, you don't, all you're doing when you leave that dirt bare is just heating up the earth. And so put in some layers. Don't be afraid to have some trees and some shade. Even if the cover crop dies, at least the roots are still in the ground holding mm -hmm. the soil in place. That's right. What we hate to see here in Ecuador is They'll take a top of a mountainside, cut a new driveway up their new road, and then they'll burn all of it, you know, because they're going to plant some corn. And here comes a heavy rain and everything washes down, mm -hmm. covers the highway, big landslide. Um, so, you know, that's an educational process that's got to happen. And it's going to take, you know, the government of Ecuador to, you know, push that in the right direction, make that happen. Yeah, and we'll see. They're they're really warning because we're in the El Nino. Once we get into past that and start having rain again, they're saying they're going to be a lot of flooding and a lot of landslides. And I'm watching all of this new construction going up. And it's like I really hope when people build their house, they're putting it on a firm foundation because it's not looking like it's going to be good come yeah. first of next year. When we get these heavy rains during the rainy season, things are gonna be a little tough around here. Yeah, could be. And that ain't no conspiracy. No, and we were we went to Loja yesterday and we were looking at the roads. There's a lot of places between here and Loja that um, they haven't repaired. And so the on the edge of the mountain, there's uh, it's caved in a bit. And if they don't have those fixed up or something before the rains come, yeah, the it road may to be Loja bad. could be blocked. It could be bad. Yeah, sure could. So I, I really would like a drink of water, but the <laughs> aliens drink out of my cup. I'm not going to drink after an alien. No. Yeah. Not Especially the little rug rat alien we have. Exactly. Um, yeah, so, uh, you know, conspiracies. Is the government out to get us? I, probably every government's out to get you in some kind of way. They want your money, that's for sure. That's for sure. And, you know... If, if they got to poke your project, whatever, to, to make you obey, they'll do that. I, I agree with that. Um, just keep fighting for your rights. And when it comes to conspiracy theories, you know, have an open mind is my suggestion. And know. a good sense of humor. 
that's even more important. Mm. And don't be so dogmatic that you can't look at new evidence from day to day. Um, yeah. Just in the time I've been sitting here, I know they've not been able to read my thoughts at all. You got the tinfoil hat on. I got the hat on. The, That's the right. layer of protection. Yeah, we've talked about the tinfoil hat in the past. We finally get to show you our tinfoil hats. This protects us. So wherever you are in the world, add your layer of security. Yeah, so we're having a lot of fun. We're just poking fun and, and we're making fun of everybody. Mm. So don't anybody get your feelings hurt. We try to, you know, and we left the most controversial theories off. So we're just doing the fun yeah. ones. Yeah, there's some stuff that we wouldn't want to talk about on YouTube because they would cancel our channel, et cetera. Probably. We don't want that to happen. No, that's just a conspiracy. Oh, that's right. Shh. I will tell you this. Please check your subscription. Make sure you're still subscribed to our channel. Um, as I said in the past, Lisa has her own, face, her own YouTube channel. And she found out that YouTube unsubscribed her from our Julie Farms channel. Not sure. a conspiracy that actually happened. So it's a really good thing we have that in there as a safeguard. Mm -hmm. And she didn't unsubscribe herself from yeah. our channel. Um, so YouTube had to do that. So make sure you check because that can happen. And I really appreciate your watching this crazy <laughs> show today here, this crazy uh, episode. And... Uh, you know, you want to reach out and talk to us individually about it and probably give us some more conspiracies. To yeah, give about. us some more conspiracies. <laughs> yeah, we are always open to listen to this stuff. That's right. And so, yeah, again, appreciate it. Hey, tickle that bell so you can be notified of our next video coming out. And I uh, hope you folks are having a blessed day. Ciao for now.